And then after that year ended, that was kind of when everything really changed. My mindset really changed. So I went on a missionary trip to Haiti. Me, my mom, my dad, my grandma. And we went out there with a bunch of people from our church back in New Jersey. And we went out there with a bunch of nurses from Villanova <coughs> University. And like our mission was to give out medicine to different churches and orphanages across the country. And like me personally, like I'm Haitian. So like I got to get ingrained with my own personal culture and like being able to get to meet the people, being able to eat the food and things like that. And then it was May 29th, 2015, everything changed. So we were playing, raise your hand, have you ever played a game of spades? You guys, you guys ever play spades, a card game? It's a dope game. We're playing, there's four of us, it's 2.30 in the morning, we're playing spades, four of us missionaries. And you ever seen those electric fly swatters? Like you hit flies, it makes like a pss, pss, pss sound. So it was like, Haiti's a muggy country, so there's a lot of bugs. And like, just remember that. And it was a storm that night. And we opened up our steel deadbolt door to let the breeze come in and just leave the screen door shut. And we're playing cards, playing cards, and all of a sudden you hear this loud pow. And like, my initial reaction is, is who's Who's hitting the fly swatter at 2.30 in the morning? It doesn't make sense. All of a sudden, you see a foot kick through the front door. Eight people run into the house behind that pow, which was a gunshot. All of a sudden, there's a guy sitting across the table from me we're playing cards. He jumps across the table and tackles me out of my chair. I'm frozen after that first shot went off. And we're both on the ground laying here. That guy who shoots through the door, then shoots at us point blank. So there's a bullet hole in the wall right behind us, and we're laying on the ground right here. There's a girl right next to us, she's wearing a shawl. They rip that shawl up into pieces and hog tie it. So we're tied, hands tied at our wrists, feet tied at our ankles, feet tied to our hands, and blindfolded. And they went room to room to room to room and stole everything. In that process, they punched one lady in the face. They attempted to rape another lady. The men all got tied up. The women, they stacked themselves on top of each other in the bathtub and closed the shower curtain. And there was a pastor who was staying with us. And he, he uh, if you didn't know where his bedroom was, you would have never looked there. So he's hiding under the bed. He calls the police, like, send help, we're under attack. Cops go, what, the, what, what neighborhood are you guys in? Nope, we don't come to that area. Good luck. Click, hangs up. Then they say, he says, you know what? Calls the next door neighbor and says, go outside with your pistol and just empty the clip out of here. So from my perspective, like, I don't know that conversation's going on. So now outside, you just hear, like all these gunshots going off and like I'm thinking like I don't speak Creole so I'm thinking is the country under attack like what's happening I have no idea what's happening after those gunshots go off the, the bandits we had thought they left but on our compound we had our house and then we also had like a medical clinic where we kept all of our medical supplies and things like that so when we thought they left they were really in the clinic stealing all of our medicine stealing all that type of stuff and it was at that point my dad he unties himself in the bedroom crawls out to see if anybody got hit by all the, first, the initial gunshots, goes up to the steel door, shuts it, put the deadbolt in, and starts to untie it. And like 40 seconds later, doom, 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 hearing bang on the door. Doom, 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 and a whole bunch of yelling in Creole. So my dad's like, everybody be quiet, be quiet, be quiet, like we're good, we're good. And then pss, pss, they start shooting out the window. So we're sitting ducks, bullets flying through the house. My dad's like, okay, 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 okay. Opens up the door for them. They come back in, they rough him up, tie him back up, throw him on top of me, and go through the house again. Steal more stuff. And it was at that time, that pastor, he was under the bed. He had actually done the prayer that morning at the prime minister's office. So he calls the prime minister himself, Haiti, and says, send the police, we're under attack. So it's about 45 minutes, an hour, from like the initial start of the attack. You finally hear sirens in the distance. And when you hear those sirens, the bandits, they scurry off and the cops come, the police, they were there for five to 10 minutes. They told us, take pictures on your phones and cameras that just got, already just got stolen and bring them by the police station if you want to. Good luck, have a good night. And like, left. And like, that was it. And like, it was at that moment, like that hug that I shared with my mom, my dad, my grandma, coming feet, got blood all over it from the, the windows when they broke stepping on it, shorts covered in my own urine. I didn't even realize I pissed myself like, throughout that process. It's kind of funny because I was, I was giving a talk the other day and I, I didn't even realize 
like just visualizing the story like over and over again, I remember in that moment, it was actually kind of funny when it happened because like obviously in the middle of you're crying, you're, you don't really know what's happening and all of a sudden I was like, mom, I think I pissed myself, like mid tears and all that, but it was, it was kind of funny when it happened. And like that hug is something I'll never forget, like truly, truly understanding the value of life. Like I'm sure, after you guys raising your hand, seeing how many people you guys know who you've lost in your own personal lives, you know what the value of life means and being grateful for every single day. And with me, the best part about an experience like that, like it sounds crazy and super bittersweet, is that it got quiet, like in my head. Like when you start to really understand that tomorrow, walking home from here, driving home from here, you could be dead, dead, like not you dead, gone, you start to handle life differently. You start to look at life differently, meaning, what would you do different? How would you treat your friends? You know I'm saying, how would you treat your teachers? How would you treat your people? How would you approach your actual sport? That was the best thing was about me, because it was at that time, my little brother, like laying down, covered in my own piss, about to die, like watching my life flash in front of my, my eyes, like what brought me peace, what brought me joy, is my little brother, as well. He went to the NFL. He went before me. He went two weeks right before that trip, and like I remember being grateful and thankful that he made it. He was out, he gets to live on, tell his own story, and all that type of stuff. And when I you know, made it out of all of that, like obviously I was messed up, PTSD wise, having panic attacks, things like that. But overcoming that you know, awful experience, that's what got me to the NFL. Just because it put me in a mental place of, I could be dead, so why wouldn't I do it? Like, if I want to run, I can run a 5K tomorrow, I don't even know what a 5K is or how far it is, but I know I could do it because it's not as bad as being tied up and shot at or at gunpoint and blindfolded. It's not as bad as anything like that. Playing football, playing, playing a game, it's not as bad as being about to die. 